Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever time of day it may be for you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Layback Gamer, and we are back with some more Civilization IV Caveman to Cosmos. Almost screwed that up, but I thankfully caught myself. Anyways, uh, sorry for that. Uh, this is coming a little late. As you can see at the top, it's about... It's already 8.45. Oh my. 8.45 p.m. So this is basically being done, made, edited, and pushed out within the spam of a couple of hours. But, anyways, last time we left off, we made some good, uh, some good progress towards... I actually don't remember what we did last time. I'm kind of drawing a bit of a blank. But anyways, in this episode, hopefully we can... Help just continue to make good progress on our cities, continue to build up the infrastructure. Perhaps we might be able to... Maybe, uh, maybe see the construction of the siege workshop in our Egyptian captured city, and go from there. Which actually, funny, funny I should say, Egyptian captured city. I've recently on YouTube started watching a uh, a series about the history of, uh, well, not really related to Egypt, but it's it, it, of the ancient Romans. And I've just been going through that and just been watching videos about history based on uh, from around that time. And right now I'm on the I'm on a part where Oh, what was the name of the video? Oh, I think the, the main focus of it was Antony's uh what Antony did over in wet Eastern Rome. Anyways. Uh Saladin wants passage. I don't even know where you are. So, really, it doesn't benefit me. Sorry, but if it did, then maybe, just maybe, I would be tempted to take it. But it just does not. So, therefore, I, I can't, unfortunately. Uh, oh, well. Anyways, let us take you. Where would I like to take you? Um, you, well, these guys are prepping the road to here. Why don't you guys prep a road to here? And while we end the turn, I'm going to quickly just, uh, because I could do this while OBS is still... Oh, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Sorry about that. I accidentally hit studio mode instead of settings. I want to see what the uh, output video is oh geez I did turn it down a little bit oh that won't do it all ah okay well I suppose I'm going to quickly make a, a stop cut in here and splice the two of these together once I fix this alrighty there we go that should do the trick Ramses has created, um, Jimu. What is J Oh, probably a great person. And the Incans have made peace with the Ottomans. I'm wondering if the two of them were at... Well, no, I think both of them were starting civs. Never mind. I was about to say, I wonder if the two... If, uh, the Ottomans split off of the Incans, but I don't think they would have been able to. Uh, let's see here. We can, I suppose we can make a stone tool workshop on the top of the mountain there. You, there is, well, we still have one other, uh, item here that we can quickly build something over top of, and that will do. But yeah, I, yeah, I've just been recently looking at ancient history videos, which is something that I've, well, really enjoy I do like learning about history well more ancient history rather than a uh, recent history like within the past uh, I'd say maybe to uh, maybe the well, I guess past 100 years yeah that that makes sense in the uh, 20th and 21st century not really not really interested in that since I've heard it so many times we, we hear about it so many times we just don't have enough of ancient history to really, just, you know, go off of. Well, we have a ton, but 
I wish we knew more. We knew way more about well, what all of the all the ancient folk did, even the medieval folk to a degree. I see. If I were to, I wonder what my favorite timeline would be, Pro or favorite uh, per time period would be. Ah, uh, that's a tough one because I like I like medieval. I like the stuff that, I, and I know this is this is a pretty large. Co I'd say probably oh, that'd be a tough one. The uh, the Renaissance era, or the at least the transition from late medieval to Renaissance, sort of around when uh, gunpowder and cannons were first being introduced and placed on battlements of ca of castles and keeps. Uh, probably. Well, Iron Age, primarily, and Rise of Rome this one is another interesting point. Uh, I haven't, don't really know too much about it, but I wouldn't mind learning a little bit more about uh, sort of the industrial era and how, you know, Britain really came to be a great a industrial powerhouse at the time. I would also be interested in learning a little bit about... Yeah, tell me in the comment section, what is your favorite point in history? What do you guys, or do you guys even like history? You think it's just a bunch of, uh, just something that's not really worth paying attention to? Or do you guys like history? I like history because, well, a big reason why I like history is you can learn a lot if you know what you're looking at. And, they're also, and if you can identify patterns that are in history, or, uh, or at least say what's popped up and when for instance uh i don't know well the outbreak that's well i guess we could i don't think i could say that on youtube i'm not sure if i can but the the, the big event that's going on right now with the entire world which is hopefully uh slowly coming to a close since you know yeah uh, i don't even know if i can say that on youtube anymore Jesus, a lot of things that I don't know I can say. That's a little, uh... I don't like censorship. I really don't. Yeah, with everything... Hopefully everything's... With everything returning to normal. Or at least a... Mostly normal. Uh, yeah, anyway. He's learning about, say, history... What we did back then. And which, honestly, some things... Could be a little similar to now. And maybe using that to try and predict, okay, this is how, uh, mostly people will act based on this. And also how scarily it's, the, the century is kind of looking a little bit like the last century. To a degree. Which is also a little, uh, nerve-wracking. If you think about it. Makes me really hope that it doesn't repeat itself. Completely. Well, I suppose if it means that we get the, you know, sort of the re the boom that we did in the in the second half, then although it, it would come at a price for all the bad things in the first half. Yeah, it's gonna be a uh, next few years are going to be very interesting. Especially if it follows a uh, trend with what's happened in the past. See, there's quite a bit you can learn about history if you just know what to look for, or if you pay attention to it. You know what you're looking at, analyzing it, that sort of stuff. Although, personally, I think a lot, well, a good chunk of human behavior, at the very least can be can be easily seen coming from a mile away based on what we've done in the past for instance uh well i'm not really sure if it, that's a topic of debate at the moment therefore you should debate it but uh nah you know what i'm not going to i'm not gonna bother with that maybe at a later time we can debate uh how similar nowadays is to sort of the tail end of the roman empire we can debate that later. Or maybe we can... If you're interested in hearing my opinions of it, let me know in the comments section. And maybe I'll talk about it in another Civilization video. Seeing how it's a kind of 
topical for that. We're going throughout the history of a civilization, although in this it's a little, uh, a little more different. I mean, as an empire, we're doing uh, pretty, pretty well. Um, a great mediator. Uh, no. I do not wish peace. I wish to go to war. To keep fighting. Hmm, maybe one day I need to play, uh, Crusader Kings. Mm, yes, that should be something else on the list of things to play. Oh, who's declared war on what? Someone's just declared war. I know I heard the trumpets of war in the background. I don't think it's against me, though. I think I would know about And I don't even get a chance to see. It's not the Mongols. We're still on good terms with them. Uh, we are technically at peace with the Ottomans. I think we're also... Well, we're at peace with everybody but the Egyptian Empire. Because, well... I don't really much like the Egyptian Empire. They're not good people to me at the moment. Which, you know... Not acceptable in this place. We, uh, we simply wanted a couple of their cities and they're, they're just refusing to, to back that. Which, commendable, and yes, they should. You know, stick up for their cities, but they, it's... It's inevitable, so unfortunately for them, it, it will have to happen at some point, whether or not they like it or not. But hopefully we can make it as the transition from their civilization to my civilization as smooth as possible. Otherwise, then it's just going to be a, a nightmare to clean up. And I don't like a nightmare situation to clean up. Trust me, if you can have a nice, easy cleanup after everything's said and done, that'd be better for everybody. Including the Egyptians. Ooh, our siege workshop is finished in Mohawk, so now Mohawk can start building siege units for a secondary for a secondary attack city out here. Look at that, we have I don't know. What's it, what is it? Each, okay, each of these have to come with something that I'm not seeing on the surface. Uh, let's see here. Anyways, uh, you up a courtyard or tavern. Let's just get a bunch of these uh, buildings queued up. Ooh, an arena. A council, an officium, town patrol, which will give us an extra plus, minus five to uh, crimes. And afterwards, we can have you build, work on all these stories, which will take you a good chunk of time. And by then, we should have uh, some more for you to do. Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah, I may want them to actually uh, get that. So wait for this to pass by a turn, and then we'll queue it up in front. Uh, construct the story of the flamingo here. Uh, just switch the... You know what? I'll take that. I'll take that. Another uh, StarCraft 2 track. I believe this particular, well, this one only plays during, uh, or at least part of it, it plays within the first two cutscenes on, within two of the, some of the first cutscenes in Marsara. Ah, StarCraft, how I do miss you a, a bit. Now, just pardon me while I'm, I'm actually at a game trying to see. Or cave in to Cosmos. Uh, Wiki, yes, actually. I would like to see. Uh, oh! The game actually has had an update, or has it had an update? Not sure. Little Jimmy Rayner, the people's hero. <laughs> T 
attack is fiddly. Oh, I like this music. I'd like to know, uh, straight. I'd like a unit guide, please. Uh, let's see here. Oh, <laughs> there's actually a Reddit post here. A Reddit question Has anyone actually finished a full Caveman to Cosmos game? Took about a hundred and ten-ish hours. Well, I'm going to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I think we might be getting... Uh, well, actually, no. Yeah, I, we, we might be approaching a hundred and ten-ish hours. Any further? With advanced start, and I require the ascension tape. I got to the ascension chamber. I won. I was playing the fastest. It took a, quite a while. Hmm. Well, I think we should probably be the first one to actually finish a game of, of Civilization of Cape and the Cosmos. We're going to try to be. I don't actually know if anybody's gotten to the end of the tech tree yet. However, that is going to be my goal. And we I ha do have steps in place in order to fulfill that. It technically isn't going to be the same game. Technically. But... The idea is, at the end of this era, we're going to be upping the... I'm going to be basically making a save, create... Having that save... Using that save to create a brand new game, starting from there and upping the difficulty by one, because that's the only way I can do that. So, technically not the same game, but at the same time, we haven't won yet. So, anyways, uh, we gotta... Let's see here. Not so, Was it Sovereignty? No, it wasn't Sovereignty. We only had access to one. It was, uh, oh. Or Orgios. However that's pronounced. We do really need to move on from the tribal. But at the same time, 80% subsi subsidy for conscriptions, plus two unhealthiness in all cities. Units have a 30% have a minus 30% chance to avoid capture. One anger in all cities, plus 10 production, and plus 20 culture in all cities. One goal, one commerce for plantation, quarry, winery, orchard, mine, shaft mine, modern mine, and core mine. One unhappiness from barracks and garrison. One happiness from brothels and casinos. One anger from Agora. Two happiness from central bank. Two, ha two anger from labor union. One happiness from portrait painter. One unhappiness from Coit Tower. Two happiness from Las Vegas Strips. Three happiness from Mon Monte Carlo. One happiness from slavery market. Two one ha unhealthiness from foundry factory and wi Willow Run. One unhappy or sorry, one sickness from manufacturing plant and industrial park. Fifty percent construction, faster construction of fishermen's huts, butcheries allows the construction of salon, art patron, and the grand villa. Disables construction of the totem pole. I don't think that's the one we're going to go with. I actually think uh, Prolerate is what we're going to go for. But we need to get to democracy. Democracy means government by the uneducated. While aristocracy means government by the badly educated. I wonder how true that actually is. It's an interesting quote. I'm curious how true that would be. We can now build a noble, which provides six unit, six experience to units on the same tile. It's a national unit that we can only have one. Are we only allowed to have one of or one at a time? Because if it, we can if we can have one at a time, we can use that unit to supercharge up other units, which would be a very nice. Mohawk and hurry the tavern for. Okay, that's good. I'd like to actually get the seat, put the seal maker in place, then send you down to here and build me a lumber camp. I'm surprised I forgot about these two tiles. Speaking of forgot, uh, we haven't forgotten about the siege weapons workshop just yet. Let's 
see here. Is there anything else in, oh yeah, there is that city, and I think, yeah, the troops are moving up into attack position. We are gonna really need to start colonizing, or not colonizing, settling more cities soon, but I'm, I'm just busy focusing on other construction projects. I think Slane, yeah, Slane's coming up, although he, Slane is going to start building a lot of, uh, well, actually, Slane has a, quite a few buildings he can, it can build now. So I'll queue up a couple more after this. Yeah, we got a, we have a few construction projects in each of our cities, but once, uh, uh, Slane and Mohawk should be able to get through them pretty quickly, which will allow us to continue to settle. Additionally, I could also use... Uh, depending on how much pop... I think if the next city that has over, let's say, 12 pop... 12, over uh, 12 workers... You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, should I use my worker count? It's not really a population of 12. Technically it is, but... That's cool. Any city with a pop of 12 or over and has already went through at least three waves of construction. And I can tell because the first wave is mainly production buildings. Second wave is gold and a little bit of production sprinkled through depending on what we unlock. And the third is, so, is both of those plus some education or at least the highest education buildings that we can get at the time. And the highest food... Oh, and of course, obviously, anything that reduces crime and reduces disease is also mixed in there, unless it provides extra gold and commerce and extra production, which in case buildings that increase to the other two will be are added in as well. That being said, I'm not sure where I'm going with this point. Oh yeah, that being said, aside from that, uh, the next city that is ready for it, we'll go ahead and uh, queue it up. Okay, I didn't want to actually have tracks just limited to there. No, I'm gonna have to shuffle all. And once more. I really gotta to uh, increase the uh, the volume of. I, I might actually go through it at some point, like run pa Pac Man tracks through Pimora and just have it increase the volume. Uh, stat abolish an embassy. No. Again, you're too far away for me to really. Uh, for me to really make it have that at make any sort of difference. So my answer to you is no. We will not be establishing an embassy. Once I figure out where you are, then I might establish an embassy. But until that time comes, I will not be establishing an embassy with you, my friend. Same goes with all the other civilizations out there. If I don't know where you are, I'm not going to establish an embassy. Because then, uh, that, well, that would also, while it would reveal where you are, it'll also reveal where I am, and I don't want that information getting out unless I know how big you are, or at least have a general idea on how big you can be, and how, uh, oh, excuse. What's it down here? Uh, is that a Mongol outrigger? Hmm. You better not be planning on colonizing my lands, or at least the area around my lands, because that would, uh, see, I get a bit of an itchy trigger finger for war. I want to go, you're, you're scouting me? Declaration of war now! That sort of stuff. But yes, don't want to do that, my friend. Trust me, it's, e it's safer for your health if you don't do that at all. All right, come on, game. Let's tick over. Tick over. Let's go. Oh, we lost something. That sucks. Uh, let's go again. And... Oh, sorry. You weren't done with that. Oh, my. Oh, my. All right, I forgot that, uh... 
troops Bruce and Slain are just uh, uh, really powerful. Anyways, have this guy go home, I think. Yeah. That's everything they can do. I don't want to build a fort on the low ground. No point. No point in them doing that. Oh, you want me to adopt monarchy. But you must know to respect... I mean, why would you... You're, you're just... I could crush you without even a second thought. Matter of fact, I could accidentally crush you. Oh, so easy. Without a second thought. And yet you, you would ask this of me. You know, I'm, um, I, I'm almost insulted by this arrogance that you, you seem to have. I have no idea why you have this sort of this level of arrogance, my friend. It just makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. Uh oh. Aw, we lost a building. That's no good. What did I lose? Hopefully nothing too important. Suck if it was something actually important to me. Anyways, get me a standard. And you, uh, the first of our siege equipment is being constructed. Alright, so the upgrades that we can get for this is apparently we can get gold on our siege equipment. That makes no sense. Why would I want to put gold on these? That just makes no sense. But anyways, two things we can now get is but bump or er, barrage, which of course we all know. Oh, we lost the mass carver's hut. Everybody would know from the base game. Adds extra collateral damage. And then the other thing is hail of stones, plus five city bombardment damage, ranged assault plus five accuracy, ranged assault damage plus fifteen percent, range assault. A range assault damage limit plus an extra 10%. Alright, so we'll take that. Oh, we can take a second one of those. We can take a third one of those. And in case we need to run them in, we'll grab a collateral support or collateral damage. And move out our uh, newly acquired siege. And let's see here. X-Men, you may go ahead and heal up. And that's the end of our turn, I guess. Sweet. Let's keep going. Uh, I guess continue uh, the Border Patrol. And add this character to our... Uh, Cultural heritage. Huh, that was a uh, quick. Ooh, we get diplomacy next turn. And the Mongols have passed us an air score. Oh, that is not acceptable. You're not supposed to do that, Mongols. Oh, you don't want to do that, Mongols. Ooh, we got a great merchant. Nice. We had a higher chance to get a great priest, but you know what? I'll take a great merchant over. A great priest, since well, yeah, actually no, like, eh. yeah, we kind of don't need a great priest at the moment. We have Nicholas de pa Pirola, Pirola. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Was a Peru her, per, Peruvian politician, the finance minister, and twice president of the Republic of Peru. One of his reforms was the issuing of gold currency of the same value as British sovereign, as, as the British sovereign, which gave Peru unprecedented monetary stability. Good for him. No, you will not have the right of passage. I don't even know on the map where you are. I haven't had to repeat one of these in a long time. Speak softly and carry a big stick. You will go far wise words indeed we can now build a diplomat of the classical era which i think helps uh with uh diplomacy we 
We can get an ambassador's house, which for some reason looks like we're trying to balance rocks. I don't know why. Uh, it replaces the negotiator, so that would be why. Uh, that'll be pretty useful in the future. And the Emporium, which gives plus one trade route, plus one happiness, plus one culture, plus 5% gold, plus 10% yield from trade route, and plus one happy additional happiness with free market and open borders. So this would actually give us plus two. Which is nice. And now we're going after the calendar. It's happened! The siege workshop has been complete. We can now build our own siege weapons all the way out here. We get oh, 10 experience. We still get 10 experience out in this city. That is how crazy our civics at wonders and our religion is. That's incredible. How long does it take to put together one of these things? Only five turns. Only five to that's incredible. Um, I'm actually kind of debating maybe getting a little bit extra commerce in this. Well, no, if anything, I would want extra. My goodness, there's a lot of buildings to build. Uh, let me take a look at the properties. If education, yeah, education's at a good rate. Crime is still a little up and disease is on the way down. I think we should uh, focus on trying to kill both of those a little bit better. Then with them both taken care of, that should open the gates to uh, town patrol. Uh, do I have a town watch yet? Yeah, okay, so get me a town patrol. Executioner's hut actually uh, would do good too. So grab the executioner's hut. And I also require something to help bring the disease down. I just a pinch. I don't think I had anything else. That's why I built the... Uh, oh, we do have the laundry hut. All right, grab that. And we will shift alt. Well, what's uh? I don't actually know the difference. I have to look that up. So let's pull open the. Uh, this is why I wanted to be able to pull it up along the side. Um. Yeah, I really wish there was a... I, and maybe I don't know. Maybe I didn't look hard enough. Uh, or I missed it. But I really wish there was an external civilopedia that would... That you could look up on the internet. So that if I wanted to look something up, I, I could do that from here. So let's see. We want to go to units. It was... Uh, the first one was, I think, lift something. Uh, Lithobolos. Alrighty, so, it's special abilities. And this is going to depend and make the difference between what I build. Alright, so it doesn't receive any defensive, bo no defensive bonuses, but has 40% at city attack. Can do a maximum 75% damage to enemy on attack. Can bombard the city defenses, 8% per, 8 per turn. Up to 50% collateral to 6 units. I guess with the, uh... With the, uh, uh, where is the rock ability? What is this? Oh, na napalm bombs. Interesting. Interesting that we can give this napalm, uh, this. So, hail of stones gives us, oh, that's ranged assault. Okay. Uh, collateral debt. We don't need to look that up. Uh, we apparently could tra we could trade se the siege weapon. Uh, it has a minus twenty percent chance to avoid capture and a minus twenty percent chance to capture. And that's across the board. Apparently, uh, oh, never mind. Let's see here. Anything else important? Oh, it's also immune to see collateral damage from other siege weapons. The next one, start with an, I think it's or something. Uh, nope, definitely not those. Ah, uh, here. Uh, no, ox bellus. So the ox bellus uh, doesn't have the extra attack against cities, but does ex 
can, is 25% better against archers and melee units, while 50% better against mounted units and and uh, wooden siege weapons. And this upgrades to the scorpion. Uh, this can bombard 5% per turn, or 5% city defenses per turn, and can get up to a maximum of 50% collateral damage against two units. Okay. And then the exact same turn. So, it kind of depends on what we're going up again. Well, 40% city defense, I think that's still try Like, this is better against, at least in my opinion, this would be get better in the open field. Whereas, uh, the Lithobolos would be better against cities. So, I think, uh... I think our options quite quite clear what we need to go with. We're going to be going with uh, the Lithobolosis. And then after maybe we assemble, I don't know, 10, of, 10 or 12, a dozen of them, we'll then start to plan some extra city defenses. So, wow, that's a lot of gold. We also have a discover horse breeding, start a gold, uh, choose desired discovery tech, or start a gold mate. I'm going to have him just join the city. And go from there. Yes, I could use them to discover a tech, but I prefer to have these guys join up with the city. We don't really need them to uh, discover any tech for us. My gosh, we've been going on for a little bit longer than I thought I was going to go on for. Just a tiny bit. But anyways, I think it's time that I wrap this episode up. I know I didn't say so, and I honestly wasn't expecting to end it like this, but... Anyways, that'll do for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button if you really enjoyed. Don't forget to share this video or any of my other videos to anybody who you think will enjoy my content. Next time, in the terms of research tech, we're only going to hopefully we'll get the calendar and either get or almost get uh, calligraphy. Get ourselves a couple steps closer to the very to the medieval lifestyle. But of course, we are going to go back and pick up everything else. That's important after we get to that point. And this requires a lava rock quarry, which we don't have, but we will be getting that at some point. And in terms of everything else, well, we're building up our uh, siege weapons in our captured Egyptian city. And we have a plan to start expanding. You guys are so dead. You're going to die to these javelinier and spearmen combined. So yes, I have a plan. I have plans to start once our next. Uh, well, I already laid out the conditions, but we are going to back home. We're going to sort of close the gap between cities and prevent barbarians from being able to spawn. Then I think I'm probably going to mainly focus on closing the gap between uh, between Washington and. Oh look, there's a bit of iron. Do we have iron in our empire? We don't. Ah, well, I guess I haven't needed it up to this point. But, anyways, we're gonna. That's. We'll then focus on this afterwards, and finally, we'll be colonizing out here. Hopefully, in terms of call, in terms of settling, we'll be able to get all of that done before the end of this era. But anyways, I'm going on too long, and to be fair, I was trying to time it out with the music, so ah, uh, just another ten seconds. Anyways. Until next time we see each other, or at least, or at least you tune in, take it easy.